We know you are serious about your health. At To Be Healthy Holistic Clinic in Miami, we want to help you feel radiantly healthy. No need to be in pain or feeling super stressed. The holistic team at To Be Healthy, led by Dr. Janet Gallipo, will balance you in the best way possible. Try one of our Stairway to Heaven sessions. We guarantee you, you will leave our clinic feeling, well, heavenly. To Be Healthy, 305-538-8998. Welcome to Yin Yoga Lifestyle. I am your host, Colette Darville. Cultivating our body's resilience and inner silence and its application to all aspects of your life. Let's become enlightened and enjoy the power of intuitiveness and creativity. are listening to Society Bites Radio, social interaction for the mind and soul. Hello, and thank you for joining us today. I am your host, Colette Darville, and this is Yin Yoga Lifestyle. So now let us take a deep, meditative breath. Inhale, so. Exhale, hum. Candy Lynn Toman grew up in Spokane, Washington. And as a child, she was dissuaded from following her innate love of all things creative. After much years of of trauma and abuse, her struggles culminated into realization of her true power and creative talents. Candy is now a successful professional artist and graphic designer with over 26 years of experience. She is also an energy healer, intuitive and empath. Through her gifts, she is able to connect with her client's energy, helping her create unique soul-based art and design. Candy's talents are evident as the co-author and graphic designer of the book, Women Standing Strong Together. In her current creative focus, she has partnered with author and spiritual coach Gloria Coppola to form powerful potential and purpose publishing. This belief is that we each have a powerful purpose in our lives. Their vision and mission is to help authors and readers alike reach their full potential and live their sole purpose. Candy's passion lies in creating, believing adamantly that we are each born with innate creative gifts. Her mission is to help people find that inner creative voice, regardless of what it is, and in finding that creative gift to give fire to the passion that lies within our hearts. Welcome to Yin Yoga Lifestyle, Candy. Oh, thank you, Colette. Thank you so much for having me on. Oh, it's it's my pleasure. Um, I'm just going to dive straight in here and... Um, you are a co- co-author of the book, Women Standing Strong Together. So how was the book conceived? Well, you know, it's interesting. Gloria received guidance um, many years ago about creating a group of women to inspire and help others rise up. So it took a couple of tries, but we, you know, she got this group of women together. And they were, they want to do speaking to get on stage and inspire people and inspire women and to promote, you know, that mission, Gloria was guided to, you know, she said, well, why don't we write a book? We all have these deeply authentic uh, stories of right. how we came to know, you know, our authentic mm-hmm. purpose, our, you know, our awakening and we're going to be sharing that. So let's, let's write a book. And that's really how it was conceived. It was conceived out of this desire to help women rise up to, you know, Mm -hmm. wake, awaken to this, this inner purpose. And you, uh, how did you and and Gloria meet? Like, because you're the co-author. So um, uh, did, did she inspire you? Did you inspire her? How did that work? 
Well, Glory and I have been um, friends for about nine years. I met her when I started down my spiritual healing path as a massage therapist. Mm-hmm. I met her when I went to Kauai to study Lomi Lomi. Ah. And so at that point, she was my kumu, which is the Hawaiian word for teacher. And we connected through that. But then shortly after that first uh, 10-day retreat that I did with her, she was receiving guidance to create cards around the, um, the Hawaiian words. And their deeper meanings, because each Hawaiian word, as in most sacred languages, the word has more than one meaning. And then there's Uh another level, which is the energy of the word and the meaning. So she was being guided to create these cards. And at the same time, I was also receiving guidance messages and channeling these messages. And one day she called me and she says, we should do this. I said, you know, it's funny. I already received the first message. (laughs) So we created the universe the, the ahead of you. <laughs> yeah, you know, and it keeps doing that. It keeps bringing us together right. to create all of these things. We've written. She's written a couple of books that I've done her art and design for. We did the Aloha cards, mm-hmm. and then we, you know we've done women standing strong together. Yeah, and it's um, uh, and I know you talked about you know everybody coming together, talking about um, uh, um your experiences and inspiring others. Um, but I'm going to, I, I mean, I, you could probably answer this question um, probably a little deeper, but why, and why is it so important to write this book? Why was it so important? Um, because you could have, um, you could have written probably any book, but this particular book with these 12 authors, right? Um, right. So could you talk about why was it so important to write it? Well, you know, it was an amazing journey. I don't think that any of us expected. And it was important to write the book as much for the healing of the authors as it is for the healing of the people who will read it. Right. And what we discovered, and I think the universal reason why this book was written was so that people know that they are not alone in what they're experiencing in their life. Right. There, the, you know, the stories, there are many that are similar and they all have this common vein of knowing that we have a deeper purpose and the, the struggles or the, the journey of, of, realizing that and becoming okay with it and becoming okay with ourselves. And I think each of us goes through that struggle, that journey of being told by God or the universe that we have a greater purpose for being here than being a mom or paying the bills. Mm -hmm. You know, we get conditioned to believe that by society But we all have this inner fire, this purpose, this reason why we are here. And so the book, writing the book was massively healing for each of us who wrote the stories on on levels that we weren't even comprehending when we started. And, you know, especially for all of us, including me. Yeah. But, you know, talking to now the people who have read the book, And so almost every single person says, I now know I'm not alone. Yeah, really important. Yeah. And it's it's powerful. It's really powerful because we become so isolated from each other, especially women. You know, the, the call to come into circle for women is huge right now and it's getting louder. Yeah. So this is our circle of women. And in that circle, we support each other through the healing process. But then you reach out your hand and you hold hands and you say, you're not alone. I know what you're going through and I made it. So you can too. Yeah. So inspirational. Um, Now, uh, your chapter in the book is the first one, isn't it? And um, I believe it is. (laughs) I read it. (laughs) And um, can you, can you talk about 
um, your chapter, the one that you contributed to the book? Yeah, absolutely. So, and it was funny again, you know, Gloria's amazing catalyst in my life. She and I had met up in Calgary for a speaking event Mm -hmm. and we were having a really simple conversation. I was driving her to the airport and because I was driving home to Calgary, she was flying home to Florida and we were talking because she had done some craniosacral healing on me um, the night, a couple days before in the hotel room. And I, through my whole life, have always said, it's okay. You know, when things hurt, I'm tough, I can handle it. And so she was doing, she had to do some, you know, deeper work. And she kept asking, is it okay? And I'm like, it's okay, it's fine. Even though it hurt, and I didn't like it. I'm like, no, it's fine. (laughs) Yeah. So we're talking, and she, out of nowhere, she says, you know, you don't always have to endure these things. You have a right to say stop. And like I describe in the chapter, it's like my whole world just lurched. Yeah. And I had, and I had this understanding, a, a beginning understanding, which went so much deeper through the course of the next couple of months. But I, as a child, I was abused by my biological father and I couldn't say stop. And I never understood until that moment, how that had played out through my whole life, Mm -hmm. through my first marriage, through, I mean, so many things. And I had, have been, or have been struggling with a creative block for many, many years. And it had become so frustrating to me that I was doing all of this deep healing work, this deep spiritual work through, you know, Lomi Lomi and Gloria and all of my spiritual studies and practices. And I still was up against this wall. And so when she said that, you know, I have the right to say stop. It didn't even hit the full impact then, but I could see, you know, it was this vision of the first time that the sexual abuse happened when I was a child. Right. And so this under, this understanding began to dawn, but it went further. So that would have been enough. You know, that's a big piece to, mm-hmm. to know that at any point in my life, I can say stop. I can say, I don't like this. This isn't right for me. I'm not going to do this. So that's a huge realization at any point. Absolutely. But it went, you know, it went deeper. So I wrote, I started writing the story and it was very much the surface story, the victim, the pain. And then I rewrote it a couple of times and, you know, cleared away a couple of layers here and there. And I thought I was done. And it was, it wasn't, it was an intense story. And Gloria and I were talking, she says, I don't want your chapter to be first because it's too heavy. She says, I'm getting, you know, the energy, all I get out of your story is this energy of the pain and the abuse. And I stopped and I thought, that's not what I want to put out in the world. I don't want that energy going out because there's enough of that energy now. Absolutely. Yes, of course. And so she's, I said, I'm going to rewrite it again. She says, what? <laughs> I said, just, just give me a couple of days. I, I, we're still in the process of laying out the book, you know, because I did all the graphic design and the layout for it. I said, I'm going to write it again. She's like, um, all right. <laughs> you know, and Gloria is an amazing coach and she has such a gift for with a few words helping you get down into these deeper layers so I, I rewrote it and every time I wrote it another layer of healing happened and I began to understand and what comes out in the final version is I always knew as a child that my biological father wanted me to be a boy. And oh. the, the block that was, not only did I have a creative block, I had this persistent not enough going on in my life with everything. And in writing the story, all of a sudden I could see, and I, was, I just clear as day, from the moment that you're born, if you are given the idea that you're not right, that's where that not enough was coming from. I wasn't a boy. 
I, therefore I couldn't do what he wanted to do. And then because I 